say you, you've got a, a couple of, two boats loaded to Ellsbury Port, about 45 tonne of sugar. And you've got to bring that up to Birmingham. Yeah. All right, you've got to bring it up to Birmingham. And you've got so much a tonne for bringing it up to Birmingham. You've got nothing for loading it. It was brought to the side of the boat with the trucks, with little hand trucks, and you got it on your shoulder and you loaded your boat. And you've got nothing for that for loading 45 tonne of sugar. You only got paid for carrying the sugar from Ellsby Port up to Birmingham. And when you got up there, you've got to unload it with the change up, up through the holes, you know. And uh, you've still got nothing for that. You only got paid for carrying the sugar up that. When you empty, going from Birmingham down to Ellsby Port to fetch some more, you've got nothing. You've got nothing for an empty boat. Doesn't matter where you travel, you've got nothing for an empty boat. You've only got paid for carrying tonnage. Mm. You know, when I was talking about a, a person loading 45 tonne of sugar up on the boats, you bear in mind that you've got to get a coal fire. You've got to get a coal fire in the morning to get you, you know, you ain't got no gas or nothing like that. You've got the coal fire to get yourself a cup of tea and something to eat before you start humping that sugar. How you, many people? How many people to do that? One. One person? One person. 40 tonnes? 25 tonnes, 25 tonnes, 27 tonnes. Oh, one, one person. And you, you know, you want to drink a drink of water after. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hard life. 14. So, uh, I was about 14 and a half, actually. And then when I, when I went on the cabin boat, on the day boats, the jerry boating. Yeah. Who did you work for when you were on the... I worked for Elements. Yeah. I worked for S.D. Branch at Birmingham. I'm in there at the Coal Wharf, round Brookfield's Wharf, that's round the Winds and Green Loop. And I had two years working for them. And that's where we did work and earned some money. And I'm going back 1940, 41, who was earning £10 a week apiece, me and the old man. A lot of money there, wasn't it? was a hell of a lot of money in them days. And you spent a lot and of I money? And I spent a lot of money on booze. <laughs> we had them very hard locks from Worcester Diblis right up to Tarbic Lock, which was 30, 58, and it was like a, a day, a good hard day's work. Then we used to get to Tarbic when you had the horse boats, and a tug would pull you through, the, through them two tunnels there. That was like... Um, Tarbic in Shortwood Tunnel, then the horses would pick you up again at the end of those tunnels, pull you to Kings Norton, and then the tug would take you through Kings Norton, and then you'd go have your horse again, and he'd take you on into Birmingham or Bourneville, or wherever you was going. But sometimes, if you had a motorboat and there was two boats together, the horse the horse would stop at Tarbic, and you'd pick him up when you come either back from. Birmingham or Bourneville, wherever it was, and the lock keepers used to look after your horse when you was at, at Tarvik, and then you pick him up when you come back. Uh, well, in, in my family there was five children and just mum and dad, and obviously it tends to be a bit, a bit crowded. <laughs> was it very hard for your mum and dad, do you think? Oh, definitely, definitely, especially having a biggish family, you know, because some had big families, you know, but... Uh, but they had to work all, uh, start early in the morning, about six o'clock, until 10 o'clock at night sometimes, you know, because uh, that was all they, <laughs> they had to do it to get earn the money because they, in them days you didn't get, get paid much. <laughs> Mostly use them and all. They'd fight over a bridge. They'd fight for the right to go through a bridge or through a lock. Mm. Oh yeah, because mostly the locks have been, oh, fish fights on the, on the towpath, yeah. Sometimes you used to uh, argue over the locks who was going first and uh, get up to fighting and then probably you'd lose the fight and you still let them go first. <laughs> and that's how I started then courting because the old man when he loaded at night time he wanted to be off, he didn't want to stop but I wanted to take the girls to the pictures and I couldn't so I thought if I go captain I can do what I like. Young, youngest captains on the canal, weren't you? Yes, I was 18 when I took captain. Now I met Hilda, she was on the Thomas Lake, and then I went subcontracting then for Cadbury's, carrying crumb from Knighton, that's in Shropshire. 
to Birmingham. And when we used to meet at Wayne Aston, she used to say, Ask Joe, Mama said, for some of that uh, crumb. To see. It was just like bags of coke talk, but it, but it was brown, you see, and it was better than the chocolate, it was a pure chocolate. And uh, I used to get the dish and give it a dish full, and that used to last for about a week or a month. And when they saw me again, Cadbury's, just Cadbury's used to allow us chocolate so we wouldn't pinch it. And we got fed up with chocolate, so they used to say, you have as much as you want, and take you around the factory, you could pick up what you want. To look at it, it used to make me sick looking at chocolate, so I don't bother, I used to give it away. And that's how we met, that's how I met Hilda. So that's how you chatted her up then? That's how, I chat that's how I chatted her up. Were you courting before you got married? Oh Christ. Fifteen years. Fifteen? A long while to be courting. I don't suppose you saw each other that much, really. Well, no. We used to have to write to one another. And when you know scholar, it was a very big problem. But Joe was a very good letter writer. And I used to be a very good talker. And what I used to say to him, he used to put in the letters. And, you know, I've still got the letters today as I've sent Hilda because I kept them and when we got married he gave me the letters and I've got her letters and it's a beautiful story to read them.